Warning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing or difficult to hear. Listener discretion is advised. Luna's moon shone directly overhead as a strong autumn wind beat mercilessly against Carousel Boutique. The gusts were powerful and eventually worked their way through small cracks between a window and its sill. Rarity jumped and gasped out in surprise when the pane gave way and opened to the roaring wind outside. She steadied her breath and trotted to the window to firmly press it back into frame. A voice called out from the room above the boutique and carried down to the nearly empty shop below. What was that? Rarity looked up at the staircase with chagrin. Just the wind, sweetie. You can go back to sleep. Rarity called to her sister, but received no reply. She bitterly wished she could be like Sweetie Belle right now warm in bed and drifting off to a contented sleep. But Rarity's tapestries remained unfinished, so she could not afford such a luxury. Instead, Rarity clung to the anticipation of a soft pillow and a proud sense of accomplishment. She just hoped that Luna's moon would still be in the sky by the time it became a reality. With the wind muted, the boutique's ambience quieted to the soft hum of a sewing machine and the rustles of fabric fed into it with precision. The 13th, and the most elaborate tapestry to date, was nearing its completion. Rarity hoped it and the many other tapestries she had created would remain hung in the castle, or perhaps town hall, long after commemoration's conclusion. After all, These weren't silly ice sculptures or party decorations that could be cast aside at the end of the night. These were intricate pieces of art that Ponyville could embrace year long. At last, the sewing machine stopped on its final stitch. Rarity carefully pulled the tapestry free from the machine, cut the excess thread, and held it aloft in her magic. She remained stone silent as she stared at the silhouetted depiction of the stallion it bore. The drive and determination to complete her task was pushed aside for darker, unwelcome thoughts. She was familiar with these thoughts and memories, and chagrined that they assault her mind now when time was a crucial factor. But, like the flow and ebb of waves crashing into a shore, there was no stopping their occasional flooding her consciousness. It was always the same memories, played out like a picture show, incessantly reminding her of the night that changed everything. A night seven years prior, a night whose secrets she would keep until her dying breath. That night began with such hope and confidence and rarity. After weeks of study and preparation, Twilight was finally ready with a cure. No longer would Rarity have to hear about those massacres found in that once thriving apple orchard, or about the monster that lingered there. A monster that only Twilight and her friends knew to be Applejack. They all gathered at the outskirts of Sweet Apple Acres, 
and each were given a small syringe of that mysterious remedy. Rarity recalled clutching the syringe tightly in her huff and feeling an odd reassurance of safety and hope. Her friends all felt varying degrees of anger, fear, and betrayal, but Rarity felt conviction. If this was the cure, it meant that the fault did not lie with the pony, but with the potion. Applejack, the real Applejack, would never allow such monstrosities to occur. To Rarity, she was just an unwilling and unlucky vessel for dark magic to corrupt and possess. Applejack would be found, cured, and their lives would resume with normalcy and peace. This was the delusion Rarity chose to embrace. So, boldly, Rarity ventured out into that cursed orchard. To cover more ground, it had been decided that each friend venture out on their own, though even Rarity felt trepidation at such a prospect. She recalled the eerie silence in those trees and the uncertain fear that hung in the air. After some time wandering aimlessly, she happened upon a victim yet to be discovered. Their desiccated corpse was shriveled and dried from the intensity of the heat wave Equestria was suffering. Enough time had passed that wildlife had already picked it clean of tissue and organs, leaving only bones and patches of colored fur behind. The shock and stench of decay brought instant tears to Rarity's eyes. She refused to investigate it further and give an identity to the poor pony victim but made a mental note instead where to send ponies for the remains on the following day. Rarity swallowed her fear and repulsion and pressed onward. Soon after, she happened on a second undiscovered corpse strewn about the orchard in Rarity's path. Then, a third. Seeing the gruesome death first hoof like this was weakening her resolve and corroding her sympathies. Rarity's hope wavered as dimly as the unicorn magic she used to act as her light in the darkness. Still, she forced her hooves to press onward. She knew she was getting close and was mentally preparing for the shock of what Applejack had become when she found the fourth butchered pony. At first glance, he was unrecognizable like the others but the bloodied patch of fur bearing a cutie mark caught Rarity's eye. She didn't want to believe it, but her pinprick pupils landed on a torn mustache. And finally, a wide and unblinking blue eye whose hue matched perfectly with her own. There was no mistaking him now. Hondo Flanks, her father an overwhelming sensation of a thousand pricks of needles assaulted her skin, and the world around her was swaying off kilter, as if she could not find balance. Seeing some pony she loved, so brutally annihilated had shattered her resolve and her mind. Had her legs given out? Had she passed out? Had she even screamed at all? Those memories were lost to her. All she could recall was being frozen in grief and would remain on the orchard floor until she was discovered hours later in that harsh, hot sunlight. Rarity never spoke of that night. Not even to Sweetie Belle, whom she learned after the fact had been in those very trees that same evening. Rarity screamed out again with the same window she'd closed minutes earlier, erupted into a cacophony of shattered glass. The gust of wind that followed blew out the candles that Rarity had lit to sew by. She put a hoof to her chest to steady her heartbeat, as she ignited her horn with magic to light the way. She walked carefully towards the window to inspect what had happened. However, her hooves came to an abrupt halt when she spotted what laid amongst the glass debris. It was small and old, rusted and weather-worn from exposure to the elements. A long, cloudy cylinder held what appeared to be a solidified solution inside. 
On one end of the cylinder was a broken metallic tip that Rarity knew had once been a long, sharp needle. On the other, a plunger that was now rusted in place and unusable. She fearfully stepped closer, her mind refusing to believe it could be the very syringe she'd carried all those years ago. Before she could brave a chance to pick it up, however, she could hear a voice above the wind outside. Blue something? That voice, the gruffness and graggle was both familiar and foreign. Rarity's eyes shut up to see a figure outside the boutique, shrouded in darkness and the haze of new rainfall. Swallowing back the lump in her throat, Rarity raced to the door of the boutique and pulled it open with her magic. She had every intention to confront the unknown assailant for what had happened to her window, but the rain pitter-pattering on the doorstep gave her pause. Getting wet was notably the least of her problems, but the instinct not to venture into it granted her some precious time to think before she acted. Was an encounter with a potential stranger in the dead of night really an intelligent pursuit? Rarity was rapidly weighing her options when the shrouded figure made their presence known and walked with a confident stride towards the door. Rarity realized she'd made a mistake and backed away quickly. She gripped the handle of the door in her magic to slam it shut, but it was too late. The intruder had jutted out their hoof to keep the door open. Uh-uh. Can't run away this time. Rarity and the intruder were only a few feet from one another, but the aggressor's identity remained a mystery. The only light source at Rarity's disposal was her unicorn magic, but its meager blue tint did not offer her many helpful clues for distinction. Rain had flattened whatever style their mane and tail had been in before the storm, so all Rarity could make out was a strange, sopping wet, pony-shaped figure inching ever closer towards her. A small inkling started to build in the back of her mind when she heard that deep, raspy drawl. Goodness! It's an absolute downpour out there! Come inside, you must be drenched! Rarity's years of putting on a professional demeanor for customers was serving her well in this terrifying ordeal. She, she didn't, didn't know, know if this pony was dangerous, or if they could be fooled, but she held firm to the facade. She motioned for the pony to come further inside as she forced a smile. Let me get you some towels and perhaps something soothing to drink. She asked, looking for any excuse to distance herself from this stranger. Why'd you let me do that, Rares? Rarity's breath caught in her throat, and her hooves froze in place. Only one pony ever called her Rares. The only pony this couldn't possibly be. And yet... Applejack? Rarity dared to ask. She brightened her horn's glow to take in the details before her. An object barely passing for the term hat was practically in shreds as it laid limp and wet atop the pony's matted mess of a mane. The eyes this pony had were sunken into her skull, listless and almost devoid of color. Her skin sagged in places around her eyes that made her appear far older than she was. It didn't help that the fur itself was paler than the warm orange hue she remembered, like Applejack had been sun-bleached. Rarity glanced away from her face to take in the rest of Applejack's wrinkled, marred fur and hooves. She noted that Applejack's frame was bulkier in places than she remembered, as if the elapsed time apart had been spent honing the strength that was present in Applejack from the beginning. When she let the terrifying reality finally settle, she returned her eyes to AJ's to find a piercing gaze that was firm and bore into Rarity. I'm waiting. Let you do what? I don't understand. That night, you and I both know what you saw. Applejack said, taking a step closer to Rarity. She stumbled back a few paces. Her heart was pounding so violently. She could feel it in her temples. Jack, I couldn't. I mean... Rarity scrambled for words. She did indeed know what Applejack was talking about. But she had denied that thought, that reality, for so long that she convinced herself it wasn't true. I don't know what I saw. I saw... 
I saw my father, that's what I saw! Applejack cocked her head to the side in confusion, like she wasn't expecting that response. She moved again, but pushed past a confused and frightened rarity. To stand at her workstation instead, Applejack reached out with a withered hoof towards the tapestry waiting there, and stroked the fabric depiction of Hondo Flanks. So what? You just gave up on saving me then? No, I wanted to. I had every intention. I, I was just so scared, Applejack. I didn't know if you caught my case or not. I didn't want to be the next victim rotting in your family's orchard. Rarity pleaded. Images assaulted her mind as she was unable to force back the memory. She did see Applejack that night. It, it was, was after the discovery of her father's corpse. She theorized later that she must have found her before Twilight or Rainbow Dash had. She could have spared her friends and her sister from what was to transpire that night. Instead, Rarity chose to remain frozen on the ground while AJ slinked back into the darkness. It weren't like I was coming at you. If I hadn't seen you, you could have snuck up behind me with... that. Applejack motioned to the broken glass and the old syringe beneath the windowsill. Rain was pouring in from outside, and a clap of thunder roared into the dimly lit room. Rarity was at a loss for words. She'd had that very thought time and time again. Only now, it was made real by the pony she failed to cure. You didn't by chance to see what happened to Dash. Why? What about them youngins, huh? Scootaloo. Did you see how it affected your sister? Applejack asked. Rarity knew she was dancing around the gut punch, but that it was coming. Applejack stared Rarity down, as if she was waiting for Rarity to mention the name of the final pony present at that horrible scene, when Rarity didn't respond. Applejack's, Applejack's demeanor, demeanor instantly, instantly changed. changed. She, she took the tapestry, tapestry in her bare hooves and tore at the fabric, ripping into it as easily as tearing a piece of parchment. Oh, Applejack, please! Rarity pleaded again frantic this time and reaching out for her ruined tapestry. What happened, Rares? What happened because you didn't cure me sooner? Tell me! I want to hear you say it! Applejack tore into the tapestry again, but Rarity lowered the hoof she'd raised in protest. Guilt had encompassed her, and she no longer had the will to stop AJ from her destruction. Rarity took a couple of steps back, with her ears flat against her head. Eventually, she turned away completely, refusing to watch Applejack make tatters of her father's likeness. <laughs> oh, I see. You're still lying to yourself, ain't you? You still think you're innocent. No, I am not innocent. I know what I didn't do, and what I could have done. Rarity snapped, bitter defeat in her tone. She'd suppressed this shame for years but knew eventually she would have to confront it. She just hadn't expected to do so like this. Say her goddamn name, Rares. Rarity looked up in shock to see Applejack standing on the other side of the room when she hadn't heard her make a single hoof step. She whirled back to see the remains of her father's tapestry before realizing Applejack wasn't satisfied with just one tapestry. Applejack, please. I know you're angry with me, but you don't have to do this. Say her name! Applejack screamed, tearing another tapestry down the center. When she did, Rarity's all-consuming guilt morphed itself into anger. Stop it! Rarity screamed, using her magic to rip the tapestry from AJ's grasp, exacerbating the damage. Applejack continued her destruction, while Rarity desperately tried to stop her. I'm not the one who took dangerous magic from Twilight. I'm not the one who didn't heed her warning. I'm not the one who, who slaughtered pony after pony on my family's property. I'm not the one who tried to kill our friends. Applebloom wasn't my fault!
Applejack stopped suddenly at the mention of her sister's name. After a long pause, she looked up at Rarity with tired, soulless eyes. There now, was that so hard? The gathered tapestries in Applejack's hooves were then unceremoniously dropped, and she walked away from their remains. Rarity seized the opportunity and raced to protect them from further harm. She fought back the urge to sob as she gathered weeks of ruined work into her hooves. Silent tears fell onto their shreds, but they weren't shed for the loss of art. No, these tears were for her returning guilt, unearthed and unyielding. Rarity! Rarity's head snapped up the second that Sweetie Belle spoke. Sweetie was standing at the base of the staircase, looking from one side of the room to the other, taking in the sight before her. When her eyes fell on Applejack, she screamed in unadulterated fear and sprinted back up the steps. Something dark and evil started growing in Applejack's sinister expression. Rarity didn't know what it meant, but she knew to be afraid. She tried to scramble to her hooves to stop AJ from whatever she was planning to do next, but was caught up in the tapestry's tatters. Applejack, this is between you and me. You leave Sweetie out of this. I'm guilty, all right? It's my fault. Just leave her alone. Rarity screamed, her voice cracking as she ignited her horn with magic. She levitated anything within magical reach to hover around her as makeshift weapons. Hoping it would be enough to intimidate Applejack. Sewing scissors, pins, bolts of fabric, needles, and even the sewing machine itself hovered around the frightened unicorn as she kept fighting to be freed from the mess of her ruined art. You'll never understand my pain. Applejack said coldly, her icy gaze falling on the scrambling unicorn without a hint of concern. I lost my sister, so maybe you won't understand until you lose yours. A frightfully similar sensation took hold of Rarity at the sound of those words. Those thousand needle pricks and the nauseating swaying assaulted her body as it had seven years prior. It was all she could do to remain upright as she watched Applejack ascend the steps after her sister like a bolt of frenzied lightning. No, Rarity wouldn't succumb. She couldn't succumb. She'd left Sweetie Belle in danger once before, and this was her one and only chance to rectify that mistake. With an outcry of fear, Rarity thrust every object she'd held aloft in her magic after the fleeing Earth Pony. She didn't wait to see if any of them had had any success before building up her magic for a second blast. The resounding explosion of light and destruction eviscerated the tapestries that held her down. There was no time to feel any regret for the loss, as Sweetie Belle's distant screams urged her forward with single-minded determination. She raced up the steps, two at a time, her tiring magic building for a third blast she had just reached the doorway to Sweetie Belle's room when Applejack opened the door and slammed herself into it. As a result, the door lambasted Rarity with enough force to send her careening down the hallway. Magic sputtered as Rarity screamed out in agony. She roughly collided headfirst into an adjacent wall. Through the cacophony of shrieking, dissonant tones, Rarity could have sworn she heard something crack. There was no word for the pain of it all, just a continuous and searing white-hot agony that threatened her consciousness with every passing second. Still, Rarity refused to to give give in to the the comfort of darkness. She couldn't fail her loved ones. Not again. Not ever again. Guilty! Guilty! Applejack's screams were barely audible over Rarity's pain, but she latched onto them as an anchor in reality. Adrenaline wouldn't pump through her veins forever, so she had to act now. Then came the sound of Sweetie Belle's garbled cries. More anchors, this time pulling her to stand again. Her legs shook, 
each step of a new tidal wave of needle pricks with increasing intensity. She kept going. This was a pain she'd wish on no pony, enemy or otherwise, but she refused to relent. Her sight was greatly impaired, and her equilibrium suffered even worse. She fell flat on the ground, darkness encroaching. A single stream of blood flowed from somewhere above her eyes, coloring her vision in crimson before she swiftly wiped it away. Gritting her teeth, she crawled onward, then pushed herself up to her hooves and stumbled forward haltingly. The distance to Sweetie's room was the most lengthy and languishing journey Rarity had ever experienced. Finally, the opened door was within reach. As her hoof outstretched for the handle, hoping to steady herself with it, she caught sight of her sewing scissors. They had been part of the weapons she'd flung after Applejack, and, in a pinch, they would serve her just fine. She attempted to ignite her horn and hold them aloft, but her magic refused to respond. Rarity let out a winded sob, gathering the scissors in hoof. Feeling of the cold, weighty metal in her grasp. It was almost identical to what it had been like that night with the syringe. The past had caught up with her at last, and her greatest mistake was played out before her again with a choice. Rarity's mind was made up. With a frenzied cry, Rarity rounded the corner into Sweetie Belle's room. Applejack was waiting for her there, their hooves colliding together at the same moment as a clap of thunder roared outside. The pair struggled for control of the weapon in the darkness, and Rarity couldn't help but notice the absence of Sweetie Belle's voice. She could only hope by the princess's grace that Sweetie was unconscious, but all right. With each agonizing second, Rarity's strength waned. She was losing the fight, and she knew it. In a fit of hysteria, she pulled away from Applejack, allowing her to keep the sewing scissors. However, Rarity thrust out her hoof when Applejack attempted to take a step. Much to her surprise, AJ's footing caught hold, and it sent the Earth Pony barreling to the ground. Rarity could only watch in shock through bleary vision as the scissors were propelled out of hoof and skid in Rarity's direction. This hadn't been the way she wanted it to end. There was so much left unspoken, so much still unknown. She didn't even know who was killing her now, a mare or a monster. But Rarity couldn't riddle out her morality. She wasn't giving herself the choice. This was a kill this or be killed, killed situation, killed situation. So, so she was going to commit. Rarity's body screamed in pain as she forced herself up on her hind legs, syringe held aloft. No, no, no. Not syringe, not scissors. scissors. There was a sickening was sense a of falling forward as the blades and the pony wielding them thrust the downward. Thrust Rarity downward. braced herself for the impact with her victim, but the far more frightening surprise was the awkward stab hitting not pony, but floorboard. <laughs> Rarity released the scissors as her body rolled to the side, senses screaming. Somehow, Applejack had maneuvered out of the way of the final blow. For the time being, the world was spinning too violently for Rarity to find the right footing to stand. As each second passed, dread built in the unicorn's veins. She could only will her body on for so long before it would refuse to respond, and she was dancing around that last shred of consciousness. Somewhere in her stupor, Rarity's ears twitched to the sound of thundering hoofsteps descending the stairs, followed by the sound of a door opening and slamming shut again. Applejack hadn't remained to finish her off, as she had expected. Rarity slowly rolled onto her back, having to blink through the stream of blood obscuring her vision. She tried again to ignite her horn, and this time magic hiccuped to a dull light. Even just the act of turning her head to the side sent waves of piercing pain through Rarity. By some stroke of luck, she found what she was looking for right away. Sweetie Belle. Rarity gasped Rarity out in relief to find her relief. sister so, so nearby. However, Rarity, Rarity beheld the horror of her little sister's face, and that relief vanished. Sweetie Belle's mouth hung open slightly. 
blood pooling there from unseen damage within. It leaked onto the floorboards and soaked her purple and pink mane. All Rarity could see was frozen fear in those damp, milky, and lifeless eyes. She whimpered, her horn's magic extinguishing on its own, sparing her from seeing more of what had become of her baby sister. There she was again, frozen in fear and grief on the ground, while the remains of her family rotted away beside her. This time, however, Rarity didn't get to see the stars or feel a night wind blow. She had to mire in the smell of fresh blood and viscera, unseen but potent. Darkness was the only mercy left to Rarity, but even that lasted only for so long. A great flash of lightning from outside the boutique lit the room, and it was then that Rarity beheld what atrocity Applejack had left behind. The acrid smells in the room weren't just coming from the corpse beside her, but from the very walls and ceiling. For even in that second of light, Rarity could see something scrawled over and over with her dear sister's blood. The red of it was still oozing and dripping freely, making it sound as if the rain outside had leaked into the room. Another flash as Rarity's eyes beheld the final judgment that Applejack had laid on Rarity for her crimes. Guilty, guilty, hoof written and frantic, and found all over the walls, the ceiling, the canopy bed, the fixtures, and some furniture. Rarity didn't have the strength to make a single sound at this macabre sight. She couldn't even properly comprehend it. Now that the sharp pains, once kept at bay by adrenaline, came roaring into focus, Rarity's heartbeats echoed the sentiment she now felt for her sister's untimely demise. Guilty. 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 Thunder clapped and the lightning split the sky. But Cloudsdale's Cloudoceum was unfazed and untouched above the storm. The massive cloud structure was never truly in the same place twice, as it floated freely above Equestria. It was the largest active Pegasi arena and the official home of the Wonderbolts, hosting their many races and airshow spectaculars. However, that was during the day. And at the present hour, it was long past Celestia's sunset. Soren, the Wonderbolt's commander, was resting on a small section of the Cloudoceum's base cloud and reflecting on how unpleasant the place seemed when it was empty. He had grown accustomed to the sounds of the cheering crowd or even the barked orders of his team captain, so it felt eerie to be absent from both. Even the sound of the rainfall beneath him couldn't shake the uncomfortable silence as he waited out the storm. Cloudsdale would never admit it, but they had been struggling since the infamous drought seven years ago to precisely regulate the weather. Planning and preparing for rain used to be simple and easily scheduled, but even with the most precise timing and ingredients, weather machines seemed to have minds of their own from time to time. Even so, Soren hadn't thought much of staying a little late at the Cloudoceum that night until he heard the clap of thunder that started it all. He internally kicked himself for fussing over their commemoration performance gear rather than return home like the other bolts. He wasn't sure who to be more upset with, the weather workers who promised the storm would strike after the memorial or the new recruit who had forced him and their teammates to endure a grueling practice with her exceptionally high standards. Either way, he was stuck. He could technically fly through the rain, as he had many times before, but his limbs and wings ached from the laborious day. He decided that fighting the wind, water, and lightning wasn't in his best interests, especially before a big performance. As he waited, Soren reflected on the destructive nature of the storm. He winced at the thought of all those perfectly placed outdoor commemoration decorations ruined by the torrential downpour. But as time wore on, 
Soren's eyes grew increasingly heavy, and his head slowly sank towards the fluffy cloud that held him. Before sleep took him, however, something swiftly broke through the layer of storm clouds and brought with them a gust of icy cold wind. <sighs> Soren reared up and gasped out from the sudden onslaught of liquid spraying his coat and wings. Soren, what are you still doing here? The source of that gust, Rainbow Dash, asked in surprise. Me? What are you doing here, Crash? Soren snapped back, using the nickname he knew she hated. I left something in my locker. Not that it's any of your business. Dash replied curtly, her eyes narrowing in disdain. She could usually take a ribbing from the other bolts, but Soren was toying with her last nerve. <sighs> If I wanted to get soaked, I'd just fly through this damn storm. Soren remarked bitterly, shaking the feathers in his wings to remove any lingering moisture. Afraid of a little rain, huh? <laughs> I'm not stupid enough to race lightning bolts like some ponies. <laughs> and if I were, I'd win that race too. What was our final race time earlier? Oh yeah, 15 whole seconds ahead of you, wasn't it? Guess you better hope that Spitfire isn't looking for a new commander after that kind of defeat. Rainbow chuffed. If Soren was going to open the floodgates for a verbal sparring, rubbing today's defeat in his face would be a perfect counter to that ridiculous nickname. Dash didn't ask at the time, but she wondered now if defeating every single Wonderbolt in a one-on-one -on -one race on the same day was some kind of record. She knew that kind of defeat might put some of the bolts in a foul disposition, but it was worth it. I don't want to hear it, Crash. You drilled us for hours over the routine, so it's not exactly a feat to beat us in a stupid race afterwards. A stupid race. <laughs> Try nine stupid races. Practice couldn't have been that bad if I was still kicking ass. I can't help if you're that out of shape. <sighs> Soren gritted his teeth and sucked in a deep, shaky breath. It took every ounce of restraint not to start shouting in exasperation and fatigue. Dash wasn't normally this grating, but for some reason, today she was quickly eroding his resolve. Soren's only saving grace was the ebbing of the storm beneath him. After some silence, Dash continued. I bet I could do it again, right now. Even after helping Twilight with that pointless list. You know what? You're on. I don't give a fuck if it exhausts you for tomorrow. You need to be reminded of your goddamn place. Soren asserted, spreading his wings in preparation. He had been resting for a better part of an hour now, and was confident that he could finally shut Rainbow up with a well-deserved defeat. Three laps around the Cloudiceum. The entry arch is the finish line. Rainbow Dash didn't argue, her brow furrowing as a smug smile spread on her lips. Three, two, one, go! God she screamed in rapid succession, taking off like a rocket and leaving a streak of rainbow behind her. She could hear Soren angrily shout something in response, but was too focused on the race to pay attention. The cold night air passed through her feathers at a breakneck pace chilling every inch of her fur. Its icy grip felt as if it penetrated her very bones, adding to the intense fatigue that she fought to keep at bay. Despite her body's warning signs, Rainbow gritted her teeth, refusing to believe that her ego had written a check that her body couldn't cash. She was so focused on victory, in fact, that she didn't notice the storm clouds dissipating beneath her until they were almost completely dissolved. When she was sure her lead on Soren was secure, Dash's attention shifted to assess her surroundings. It was something she did subconsciously when she flew. Something sour permeated on Dash's tongue as she took in the realization that a heavy mass of trees was directly beneath them. She hadn't given much thought to the exact location of the Cloudiceum that evening, especially since the storm had previously kept her whereabouts obscured. Now, though, a slight fear was trickling up her spine and threatening to ruin her concentration. 
could these be the very trees she had avoided all these years? Could she be poised just above the only place in Ponyville she vehemently refused to visit again? Rainbow's breathing quickened even more than the rigorous pounding in her chest. She tried to block the thoughts that trickled around the fringes of her mind by focusing on that final lap. It was ridiculous to allow something so inconsequential to deter her from her task. After all, a mass of trees is no threat to her, not when she was soaring hundreds of feet above them. Success was inching closer and closer for Rainbow Dash. Perhaps that was why her attention veered beyond the clouds, so assured of her win that she could focus on other things. Her line of sight lingered on those trees, trying to coax herself into believing they were truly inconsequential. That was when a glint of light caught her eye. It was only a glimmer amidst the dark grove, but it sent a paralyzing wave of shock through the pegasus. She seized midair, her limbs refusing to move to her brain's commands. An abrupt halt was too sudden and too late for Rainbow Dash's racing partner to avoid, so the pair of pegasi violently collided. Although it was enough of a shock to bring some life back to Dash's hooves and wings, the sudden confusion of entangled limbs left gravity free to pull the helpless pair towards their demise below. Both pegasi fought to separate themselves, fighting, bucking, and screaming as they plummeted. Dash was able to get one final clean buck to Soren's chest before the pair descended into the trees. Branches reached up to rake across wings and fur, ensnaring the ponies in their matted clutches. The sting of fresh wounds meshed with the choir of snapping twigs and rustled leaves. Finally, Rainbow's flailing body impacted onto the hard, unforgiving ground. She heard a series of cracks, but couldn't be sure if it had been from within or from the rain of tree debris crashing on and around her. She laid on the ground, her chest heaving as she struggled to regain her breath. Her eyes were wide and afraid, barely blinking as they surveyed the scene above her. When the rustling ebbed, she ventured to look around to see if Soren had landed nearby. Rainbow struggled to right herself, finding her limbs heavy and any movement increasingly laborious. Soren! She called out, her voice cracking more than usual as she fought the rising terror in her chest. Dash couldn't see much from the limited light under the cover of trees, so she flared out her wings to take off in flight. The problem was, only one wing responded. Dash could feel her heart pounding in her head as she slowly turned to find her left wing laying limp at her side. Seeing the marred, twig-encrusted, feathered mess was bad enough, but it was what else Dash's eyes beheld amidst the debris that delivered the worst shock. They were small, red, round, and straight from her nightmares. Dash reared back, every inch of her body screaming to flee. Soren! Where are you? Soren! Say something! Dash demanded, her mind spiraling. She peered back up at the trees, but found only obscured shapes of leaves, fruits, and twigs against the moonlight. It was a sight she'd seen before, and aside from the damp soil beneath her hooves, everything about this place felt familiar in the worst way. I told you, I don't want you fucking here. Dash swallowed hard. That voice reverberated in her skull, dulling her senses. She squeezed her eyes shut and held her breath. No, not now. She couldn't let the nightmares have control. For a brief moment, she lamented turning Twilight away all those years ago. She tried to insist that Dash speak to some pony about that night, but Dash stubbornly refused time and time again. 
Maybe if she hadn't, she'd have some kind of method to utilize now that would keep this phantom out of her thoughts. Soren? Rainbow meekly called out again, unable to get her voice above a whisper. A gust of wind rustled the leaves around her, shaking some raindrops loose. The pitter-patter of droplets on the moist ground sounded like rocks colliding into boulders and Dash's ears. That musty scent in the air lingered in her nostrils, growing increasingly foul. Ha! I am the inevitable! Ha! The harbinger of fear! And the messenger of truth you silence with hope! Rainbow's hooves responded to the phantom in her mind, and she bolted in any free direction she could find. She couldn't stay. What would have been the point? Her fear was already crippling her when she was hundreds of feet in the air. She would be even more useless now that she was grounded. Her eyes scanned for any signs of light or life as she tried desperately to outrun her thoughts. So frenzied were her movements that she tripped and fell over an unseen object. When she hit the ground, she rolled until she came to a stop against something hard. For a long while, Dash remained disoriented, not knowing which way was up or down. When her eyes finally opened, though, she could assess that she was upright and against a tree. But her eyes fixated on the object that had caused her fall. Dash's breath went still in her chest. Even in the darkness, the shape sticking out of that dirt in front of her was unmistakable. It was a long shaft with a metal end that pierced the ground to remain semi-upright. Though it was impossible to make out details with limited light, her mind filled in those blanks. Even so, it just couldn't be possible. She destroyed that accursed shovel years ago. She'd watched it blacken and burn in that firelight, and the metal spade warping from the intense heat of the blacksmith's furnace. This must have been a trick. A mirage that that phantom in her memories had conjured to torment her. And that truth, is that in the end, there is nothing at all except me. Dash winced, covering her face with her hooves and shaking so violently she was sure she'd lose consciousness. It was all she could do just to fight back the convulsions and gagging. Tears were freely streaming down her cheeks until finally she pierced that silence by sobbing uncontrollably. Her garbled gas for oxygen were the only sign that she was even still breathing. Dash gave into those years of suppressed anger, fear, and torment. She wasn't sure how long she had been inconsolable when she picked up a faint sound. Her ears swiveled behind her when she heard the movement of twigs and leaves. By Celestia's grace, Soren was alive and nearby. At least, that's what she thought she heard. Rainbow Dash. <laughs> That voice, that voice was low and ragged. Dash hiccuped through the sobs that refused to cease, trying to fight through that immeasurable pain to reach her friend. Where, where, where are you? Well, right here in the orchard, of course. <laughs> where else would I be? That voice was clearer now no longer obscured by Dash's cries and whimpers. It wasn't quite what she was expecting, however. The voice sounded both near and far away at the same time, almost like it was carried on the wind through the trees. The tone was far removed from Soren's natural timber, but Dash chalked it up to the spiral she was enduring mentally. The branches above her started to quake. <laughs> I, I, I can't see you! Are, are you hurt? Dash responded, a little more conviction in her tone. Focusing on Soren helped keep her mind busy from the fearful frights around her. I suppose in the way I am, hurt by what you did, or at least what you tried to do. 
some part of Dash knew that that pony she was conversing with now was not that same stallion she'd be groveling to for forgiveness later. Nevertheless, she carried on with the conversation without allowing her better senses to recognize the potential danger. Can, can, can you fly? I, I think I, I, I think I popped my wing out of its socket. Uh, if, if you can just pop it back in, we can get out of here. Rainbow said, realizing that she hadn't moved and her eyes were squeezed shut to remain focused on the Tascad hoof. Pathetic ponies, you are sick and make me. Rainbow's eyes popped open to pinprick pupils. As much as her brain tried to deny it, there was no mistake in that voice now. Word for word, just as in her nightmares. Rainbow couldn't face this. Not then, nor now. She had to escape. All hope for rescuing Soren was dashed as Rainbow leapt to her hooves and took off running again. As before, she didn't make it too far before she was thwarted. Though it was illogical, Dash witnessed limbs and trees shifting, reaching out for her and impeding her path. Their gnarled branches shot out from decayed trunks, blocking any hope of retreat. Dash didn't stop running, just changed course. To her horror, the process just kept on repeating itself until she was effectively imprisoned within the circlet of trees. <laughs> oh, we weren't done, the voice said. Though it sounded far less ethereal this time, Dash whipped her head in all directions and spotted a faint pair of green eyes glaring at her from behind the fence of branches. You're not real! You can't hurt me! Dash asserted, digging her hooves into the dirt floor into a reddish stance. The eyes she stared into suddenly disappeared, though, and the voice responded to Dash's <laughs> left. <laughs> oh, see, that's what I liked about you, Dash. Only pony I knew without a lick of common sense. Just a whole lot of stupid. Dash found the eyes again only to have them change to a position on her right. The only pony who thought she could cure me. Well... Do you honestly think there's anything left to cure, Rainbow? <laughs> Do you still believe you're saving me? Shut up! Rainbow screamed. Charging at the trees where the eyes glowered into her skull, she beat against the branches between her and that taunting voice, tearing at them by mouth and hoof, like she was ripping trees from the roots to make her escape. As before, the eyes disappeared, but Rainbow didn't deter from her task. If she couldn't confront that assailant, she could at least free herself. Dash's brow was thick with sweat, and she felt as if every nerve ending was alight with anxiety. Clumps of branches, twigs, leaves, and fruit were tossed over her shoulder during her frenzy. After some time, however, Rainbow felt that sickening realization take hold. She wasn't making any progress. No matter how much she tried, that underbrush never thinned. Eventually, Fatigue wrapped its jaws around Rainbow, and she slumped to the ground, hyperventilating. Her breaths were so loud, in fact, that though she heard the voice again, she couldn't quite make out what it was saying. Every ounce of her being wanted to collapse then and there, but her unadulterated sheer will refused to relent. If this part of her prison was impenetrable, then she would try someplace else. Rainbow turned around, and finally beheld the massive pile of debris she created. Her heart sank, realizing just how much she had fought through to no avail. Still, Rainbow wouldn't give up. She took a shaky step forward, choosing a different patch of gnarled fencing to try next. By the third step, Dash heard something abnormal. 
A shift in sound beneath the pile before her, she shook her head, rejecting the dread that followed the noise. On that fourth step, the shifting grew louder, and Dash could see movement from the corner of her eye. Morbid curiosity caused the Pegasus to pause and see what was coming for her next. Branches were weaving into one another, thickening themselves and casting off the apples and leaves in the process. The discarded leaves braided together their stems, while the apples collected themselves into piles. The sounds it was emitting were more than just snaps and crackles, but it also included wet sloshing and squelching. Then Rainbow felt the very ground at her hooves begin to shake. She beheld in shock a series of roots that slithered along the ground like snakes towards the amalgamation, further strengthening it. Dash wrenched herself away from the bewildering sight, deciding on a new tactic instead. She would dig her way through the muddy soil at her hooves. Mud slung in every direction as the hysterical mare fought for freedom. A taunting laughter filled Dash's ears. She grunted through gritted teeth, frustrated that the mud she excavated would end up sloshing back into place. However, she didn't stop her fruitless endeavor until the shovel from earlier whizzed past her and planted itself into the muddy mound by her side. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Dash reached for the shovel before turning to see the final conglomerated monster in the center of the orchard prison. The creature was as tall as the trees that bound Dash, though vaguely pony-like in shape. Long twisted roots, branches, and bark made up the limbs and torso, while the leaves cascaded from the tree like a mane and tail. Six apples adorned its wooded flanks. Perhaps eeriest of all was the eyes on the pony-shaped face. Two sunken indents of writhing, contorting limbs wove themselves in and out of the massive hollowed sockets. When Dash lingered on the darkness within them, however, she could make out a faint image. Dash squinted her eyes leaning forward slightly in hopes the shape would manifest itself clearer in her vision. A strange shimmer, almost like a veil of dew, was reflecting from the darkness. Within that shimmer, though, Dash watched two smaller ponies take form. The ponies were identical, shy and frightened little mares, clinging to their last shred of sanity. Blues came into focus, then reds, yellows, then a whole hue of the rainbow. These mares weren't real. Well, they were just reflections. Dash was watching mirrored images of herself retreating away from her and further into the darkness. This creature wasn't just an enlarged pony timber wolf. It was a demon. At first... The thing appeared rooted to the ground until Dash gave it the attention it wanted. The left forehoof then lifted itself, roots snapping from place until it came back down hard, only a few inches away from its prey. Dash yelped and bolted, keeping the shovel in her tight grasp. You wanted to kill me that night? A voice that Rainbow Dash finally accepted to be, well, me, said. He was coming from beyond the prison of trees and from that monster simultaneously. Here's your chance, Rainbow. Fix your mistake. Rainbow screamed an agitated, frightened cry as she thrusted that shovel into the thicket of branches behind her. Attacking the confinement's walls seemed a smarter bet than the monster itself. Both monster and pony roared with laughter when the shovel bounced off branch and twig, as if made from a sturdy metal and not wood. Ash knew that there would be no other way out of this hell until she faced and conquered that demon. If I wanted a fight, well, she best better give me one. 
With murderous intent, Dash started hacking away at the beast with shovel and hoof. To her delight, however, the monster was penetrable. Chunks of orchard debris fell off in heaps with every successful attack. The monster wasn't remaining dormant. Earth-shattering stomps were made by tremendous hooves, each one unsuccessful. The massive head lowered to ram into the small Pegasus prey, but it too would find only failure. Rainbow took great satisfaction seeing the beast ram into their wooded prison walls, and large pieces of itself snap and fall away. Even more gratifying were the outcries of anger and pain coming from that beast, as well as the voice from beyond the confinement. As Dash whittled the monster down, her confidence and her anger only grew. As it said, she should have killed me that night. That twilight sparkle, she was a fool to insist otherwise, when they could clearly see the irreversible evil that I had done. It didn't matter how I got free, or how I came to be here. It didn't matter what strange magic I had invoked now. This, this was a gift. This was Dash's chance to truly save Equestria the right way. Dash had almost completely dismantled the orchard monster when she caught sight of something that surged acceleration through her body. Blood. The pony who wielded this behemoth must have been at its core. Dash didn't hesitate. She took the shovel in both front hooves and pierced it completely through the center of that creature. <laughs> The monster screamed in bloody agony before slumping to the ground, the rest of the flora falling away. Simultaneously, the branch barriers between the trees shriveled and dropped, opening several escape paths into the orchard. Dash was clutching her chest as she tried to steady her breath, relieved to finally be free. That was until some branches gave way to show an orange earth mare standing proud among the trees. Her green eyes glinted in that darkness while an evil smirk played on her lips. Dread filled Dash's mind. If I was still there, then who did she? Dash knew she shouldn't look. She knew that I had played her for a fool. <laughs> she knew exactly what she was going to see when she turned around to look at the remains of that monster. She knew, but she also couldn't stop herself from confirming it. No, no, no. No, no, please. Dash turned her head to see the murderous shovel standing proud in the back of her pony prey. Their eyes were shut. Tear-stained cheeks mired in mud. Hooves were splayed behind them, and wings let out a final twinge before falling lifelessly on either side of the shovel spade. Soren was gone, and it was all Dash's fault. No, no. Dash whimpered, prying the weapon from her teammate's back and sprayed herself in his blood. She cast the shovel aside, collapsing on the ground and giving into her violent nausea, which ripped through her in wave after wave of shock and despair. The sounds of, well, my delighted and unhinged laughter eventually pulled Dash out of her stupor. Maybe I anticipated this being the end of Dash's attempts to subdue me, but I would be wrong. Dash methodically pushed herself back to standing position and slowly reached for the bloody shovel that she'd cast aside. She approached me, the distracted laughing villain, keeping her hooves as silent as possible as they carefully navigated around the debris. Once she was sure of her aim, she lifted that shovel. Dash screamed, thrusting the weapon at me, who only had a few moments to avoid that attack. 
Although she was chagrined to see herself miss, Dash did catch a hint of shock and fear from me when I realized that Dash was trying to pursue me still. I reared up and turned on my hooves, racing deeper into the orchard, but this time as prey, not predator. Let's finish this. Dash snarled, casually picking up the shovel and holding it aloft in her good wing. Each step she followed, she did so in confidence. One way or another, this was going to end before sunrise. <laughs>